Guys, today we're gonna be giving you our exotic glaive winter bite quest guide. Now, I do want to mention that the damage on this glaive is insane. It's a heavy glaive. We have a live cut up of us testing it, using it with a lot of different exotics, seeing how it synergizes, and we also tested its damage against Templar. And guys, let me just say, it's the best damage in the game, which is kind of ironic considering so many people were upset that this was a heavy glaive and not a glaive in our kinetic slots. Now, let's talk about how to get this thing. First things first, you need to complete the Lifefall campaign. You unlock Strand and I after talking to Nimbus in the Watchtower and the Amuna and experiencing the Hall of Heroes ceremony for Rohan, you'll talk to the archivist Quinn Lagari in the Hall of Heroes. She has a series of quests that you need to complete before unlocking the exotic quest. Now, the first quest you'll receive is Welcome to the Hall of Heroes. This is a very quick introductory quest. All you need to do is just listen to the audio recordings, spread out through the room, scan the Cloud Strider memorials, and then proceed to repair a memorial. Then it's back to the archivist again to finish the quest. Now, next, you'll need to begin the Stargazer's quest. Step one, loot a terminal overload chest at the end of stage three. These actually rotate between each patrol zone on the Amuna, and these are quite difficult to complete. So again, run some meta builds. We actually have an entire guide on how to do these activities. You can actually go and click the activity in the director to load into an instance, and it should give you other players. Day one, it wasn't, or you can just run into this activity while patrolling. Now, you only need to open the free chest, not the lock quest that requires an overload key. Now, step two, you need to defeat the Vex Hydra in the SC terminal to obtain a high security passcode. Now, this is just outside the Zephyr Conquest. You'll head into the area, kill a couple ads, and then the Hydra to progress. Now, step three, obtain a terminal overload key by completing public events, looting chests, or completing patrols. Again, guys, we made an entire guide on how to farm these keys, as well as other things like strand meditations, red box weapons, etc. But essentially, guys, it's all RNG based. But every time you loot a chest or complete one of these events or a patrol, you have a chance of getting an overload key to drop. Now, step four, after you obtain an overload key, you'll need to do another terminal overload, but this time spin that key at the end of stage three on the second chest. As mentioned in our guide yesterday, guys, each one of these chests, depending on the area that you're doing a terminal overload, will drop a specific weapon every single time. So the SMG, the shotgun, and the machine gun. Unfortunately, none of these weapons are craftable, so don't just discard rolls thinking you're going to get a deep sight. Now, step five, visit the Hall of Heroes again and interact with the Stargazer Memorial to repair it. Afterwards, it's step six, speak to the archivist again to complete the Stargazer quest, and now you're going to receive the Maelstrom quest. Now, for Maelstrom, you essentially need to bond with the Strand sources and participate in public events, patrols, and loot resources within the Vex Incursion Zone. Now, we talked about Vex Incursion Zone yesterday, but it's essentially just this bottom right portion where a lot of different Vex are going to be spawning. This is the Liming Harbor. By the way, this is also going to be on a weekly rotation, so next week, it's going to be in a different location. Whatever the zone is, just go there, and if you don't know where, just look on your director. It'll have a green Vex icon. Now, you're also going to have to find strand sources. Now, these are actually similar to empowerment pillars from the campaign. Once you collect one, you'll receive high uptime strand abilities for about 30 seconds. You need to just collect two of these. Honestly, guys, just keep running around. These will pop up, but again, it is RNG based. And finally, you need to participate in several events in the Vex incursion zone to hit that 100%. This takes about 30 minutes, guys. Patrols give somewhere around 4%. Heroic public events give 10%. By the way, you can double dip to speed up progress. So if you're in a situation where you completed a heroic public event, you can jump on your Sparrow, run out of the zone, or Sparrow out of the zone, wait for the text to load up on the bottom left hand of your screen, turn around, and Sparrow right back. This will allow you to loot the chest, and yes, you can do this for everything on the Amuna. This is a classic way of getting more loot, and in this case, more loot, more reputation, and more progress for this quest. Now, step two for the Maelstrom quest, complete the Lost Sector within the Vex Incursion Zone. This week, it's the Thrilladome Lost Sector. In future weeks, it will most most likely be a different lost sector. Not a hard lost sector though, although I will say some of the lost sectors here on the Amuna, dude, they almost feel like mini strikes, right? But essentially guys, run through it, kill the bad guys, loot the chest, and move on to step three. This time you need to return to the Hall of Heroes to repair the Maelstrom Memorial. Upon doing that, you visit the archives again right next to it to complete the Maelstrom quest, and now begins the Blue Jay quest. Now this quest is a little bit harder, as it does have some level requirements, but hopefully by this point you do have the level for it. But Blue Jay starts with visiting Nimbus, which brings you to the second step where well, you now need to go and defeat combatants in the current Vex Incursion Zone with a Strand subclass equipped to obtain Shell Code Fragments and open a Terminal Overload Key Chest to obtain a Polymorphic Engine. Now you go back to the Vex Incursion Zone and essentially just play Terminal Overload Activity. If it's also in the same area, that's fantastic. So you can double dip and then beat Stage 3 and open an Overload Key Chest. Pretty much what you've already been doing for all these other activities. Now Step 3 requires you to complete the Partition Activity. This is actually located in Liming Harbor. Set up your waypoint.
trade points, guys. It'll bring you right there. Now, step four, return to the Hall of Heroes to repair the Blue Jay Memorial. Visit the Archivist right afterwards, and now you'll begin the Strider Quest. Now, to complete the Strider Quest, you need to spend Terminal Overload Keys at each Terminal Overload Public Event location. This is where you can kind of get locked out. I actually got screwed out of it, and that's because these Terminal Overload events are on a daily rotation on Niamuna. The three areas are Zephyr Concourse, Ahimsa Park, and Liming Harbor, and the event rotates in that order. That means this step takes three days to complete, so if you haven't started on it, you'll need to complete these before you can progress. But at the end of the Stage 3 Terminal Overload, two chests will drop, and the second chest requires a Terminal Overload key to open. Keep in mind, guys, this does not retroactively complete, meaning once you get this quest step, you have to do all those activities, all those Terminal Overloads, again, and loot that second chest. Now, Step 3. Defeat Shadow Legion forces in the Amuna to find location data, and then dive into the Ahimsa Park Lost Sector for a data cipher to put the data together. Now, defeating any Shadow Legion on the Amuna will actually give you the location data. This doesn't require many kills, and honestly, you could just do it in the Lost Sector, and this will complete the second step of this quest as well at the same time. Now, the Lost Sector to acquire the data cipher is located at Kallus' ship in the Ahimsa Park. You can actually see it right here, guys. Once you arrive at the ship, head down, and it's on the sign right there, there will be a narrow walkway that leads to an opening in the side of the ship. Now, you'll need to defeat the Cabal boss at the end and open the chest to complete the next step. Now, step four, head back and speak to the Archivist again at the Hall of Heroes. Step five, interact with the Striner's Memorial in the Hall of Heroes to then repair it. And then step six, you'll need to travel to Maya's Retreat in Liming Harbor. You're actually going to travel there, guys, and you'll fight through ways of vex enemies and then interact with Confluxes until the event ends. A lot of this gameplay, I'm having to bum off with less because, again, I messed up. I didn't get it day one whenever it was actually the Zephyr event. So I'm having to wait until tomorrow to finally finish this quest. But upon doing this, guys, and interacting with those confluxes, you go back to the Watchtower and talk to the Archivist once more. Step seven, after you visit the Archivist once more, she will then give you the Winterbite Glaive as a reward. Now, guys, this is a beautiful exotic. It is ginormous, by the way, and it is the first of its kind as it is a heavy glaive. Now, its perk, Big Frigid Glaive, allows you to fire a large ball of energy that locks onto nearby targets and freezes them. Matter of fact, when you shoot it, it literally just travels and freezes everything. And it has a very long range. And if you're wondering, does it synergize with your stasis subclasses? Why, yes, it does. And its other perk is Weighted Edge, where the weapon's melee attack deals increased damage and slows target when loaded with ammo. Now, you just have to have one shot, guys. But yes, it does substantially more damage. And when combined with certain exotics like Winter's Guile, Worm God Caress, and Syntheseps, it does a hefty amount of damage. On Templar, we were almost doing a million damage in a single damage phase, which is insane. We'll be breaking down some builds for this one, guys. But the synergy overall with stasis subclasses is so good. On top of that, we have artifact mods this season that enhances our glaives. My only suggestion when you actually fire the large ball of energy that's the stasis energy, don't fire it directly at a wall because it's just going to hit the wall and disappear. It does do a lot of damage at enemies when you actually shoot it and fire directly at them. But ideally, you want to shoot it in a way in which it has a lot of travel time amongst a group of enemies. It travels slowly. It freezes during the process. The idea here is that you actually shoot it it freezes, which will allow you to easily push in with your Glaive Melee and go to Pound Town. And again, what's so beautiful about this is the synergy with other stasis aspects and fragments. Ice Flare Bolts, which allows shattering a frozen target to spawn Seekers that track and freeze other nearby targets. Yes, this synergizes here while you're getting these Glaive kills. Now, you've probably seen us doing damage to Carl, and we're actually applying Slow and Freeze. And of course, Shatter Damage. Just like the Cold Steel perk, Winter Bite is actually doing this intrinsically. So again, as long as you have just one shot loaded, it will be dealing increased melee damage and be applying slow in the process. So guys, if you want to check out our video breaking down the damage and all of our testing, we'll have that link down below. Considering that day one raid is right around the corner, this is another Lament 2.0. Lament was so meta when it first came out. Winter Bite is definitely just as good, if not better. But fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.